Welcome to the Science of Economics. I am Dr. Sajini Jay Prasad. In this class, we are going to discuss the central economic problems or basic economic problems of an economy. To understand the central problems, let us start with an example. Meet Miss Pooja. She wants to purchase a TV and at the same time an AC. Both worth rupees 30,000 each. But at the same time, she has only 32,000 with her. Clearly, she cannot purchase both the commodities at a time. What should she do? She has to forgo either the TV or the AC. So she has to make a choice. Thus, it is the mismatch between unlimited wants and limited resources that leads to the problem of choice. As we know, similar to an individual, every economy meets the basic problem of scarcity and choice. It is because of this problem of scarcity of resources and the problem of choice that an economy is pushed to face the central problems. So, before studying the central problems of an economy, let us understand the problem of scarcity and the problem of choice in detail. We know that people want a variety of goods and services to satisfy their wants. This implies that human wants are unlimited, but the means or resources to fulfill them are limited. Because of the resource scarcity, the economy can produce only a limited amount of goods and services at a particular time. That means, as the resources of every society are limited, the ability of the society to produce goods and services are also limited. So, a choice has to be made among various alternative uses of resources. From this discussion, we can conclude that the problem of choice is a result of the problem of scarcity of resources. According to Professor Lionel Robbins, an economic problem arises from the multiplicity of wants, scarcity of means and the possibility of applying scarce means for alternative uses. Thus, the three main causes of central problems are multiplicity of wants, scarcity of means and the alternative use of scarce means. Firstly, multiplicity of wants. By multiplicity of wants, we mean unlimited human wants. Secondly, scarcity of resources. In relation to the unlimited wants, the resources required to satisfy them are relatively scarce or limited in supply. And thirdly, alternative use of resources. Resources are not only scarce but also have alternative uses. Here the expression scarce means have alternative uses. What does it mean? It means that even though the resources are scarce, they can be put to different uses. They have versatile or multi-purpose use. But if it is fully used for a particular purpose, it cannot be used for another purpose. For example, this is Nidhi. She has 100 rupees with her. We know that this 100 rupee can be put to different uses or for numerous commitments on a cinema, for purchasing a book, for meals, for mobile recharging, etc. etc. But now in our example, Nidhi has two wants. She wants to have meals and have a cinema, both worth rupees 100 each. But with only 100 rupees in hand, she can either have meals or can see a cinema. That means if it is used for meals, 
it cannot be used for cinema or other purposes clearly she cannot use this 100 rupees for both the purposes at a time that means in our example cinema has to be sacrificed for meals so resources have to be allocated in such a manner that the immediate wants are fulfilled so the society will have to decide which one are to be satisfied immediately and which one are to be postponed thus the problem of scarcity of resources gives rise to the problem of choice every society is faced with the twin problems of scarcity and choice so simply speaking the central economic problem or the basic economic problem is the problem of economizing scarce resources of an economy all economies whether it may be capitalist or socialist or mixed economy as the case may be all economies face some central problems the basic or central problems can be summarized as problem of resource allocation problem of fuller and efficient use of resources problem of growth of resources problem of economic growth starting with the problem of resource allocation first resource allocation means the sharing or allocation of resources so as to satisfy most human wants this problem that is the problem of resource allocation gives rise to three questions what how and for whom to produce the first question is what to produce and in what quantities every society wants to produce thousands of goods and services but the resources available to produce these goods and services are scarce therefore the crucial decision regarding what to produce has to be taken when it is decided then the next decision is to estimate the amount or quantity of the production so the economy constantly struggles to choose what to produce and in what quantities availability of resources individual choices and government policies affect this decision the next question is how to produce how to produce is a technological issue that is what technique is to be used for producing the decided goods and services or which production technique is to be employed in the production a commodity can be produced in several ways for example take the case of cloth itself we know that cloth can be produced either by using hand loom or by using power loom now we consider these two cases the first case is the traditional method of weaving or hand loom here the production of cloth requires more labor and less machinery or capital however the second case is modern method of weaving or power loom here the production of cloth requires more machinery or capital and less labor so the question is whether to use labor intensive technique or to use capital intensive techniques labor intensive technique directly generates employment but capital intensive techniques reduces the production cost and at the same time it increases the efficiency and productivity according to the resource endowment the economy decides which technique is to be followed the third question is for whom to produce this is the problem of distribution of national income it is the purposeful distribution of final goods and services produced that is who gets what and how much the economy needs to decide the best suitable mechanism for distribution of the final products among different sections of the society the objective behind selecting such mechanism is to reduce 
inequality of income to reduce poverty and to enhance the social welfare and standard of living of people this problem is concerned about who gets more or who gets less again which should be made available free or at nominal price and to which segment so now we turn our attention towards the second basic economic problem faced by every economy problem of fuller and efficient use of resources since the means of production are always scarce in relation to the demand for goods and services they produce efforts have to made to achieve fuller and efficient use of resources resources should not be kept idle or underutilized the third basic economic problem is the problem of growth of resources since the means of production are scarce and will be exhausted due to constant use growth of resources has become another problem so the economy should try for discovering new resources to substitute older ones and the fourth and final economic problem which we have to discuss is the problem of economic growth every economy expects to increase its rate of growth in order to achieve better standard of living it is therefore essential for the economists to think about the problem of economic growth thus it can be concluded that every economic system faces certain basic problems every economy solves these basic problems depending on the nature of the economic system i hope all of you understand the various central economic problems thank you